Greetings, everyone. We're live today from SelectSire's headquarters in Plain City, Ohio, and uh, here to talk about some changes coming up in the calving, ease, calving trait evaluations. I'm Chuck Sattler, Vice President of Genetic Programs. Uh, Jeff Sigler, Vice President of Dairy Cattle Breeding. And uh, we have uh, some information uh, to present here to give you some background information of uh, the calving trait changes coming here in August. Uh, feel free to uh, send your questions in on, in chat and uh, or any uh, comments or questions, and we'll address those as we go along. So appreciate your participation, and uh, we'll go ahead and, and get started. As you all know, a base change occurred in the April evaluations, and uh, quite honestly, those changes exposed some issues with our calving trait evaluations and uh, received a lot of uh, questions and concerns uh, following the release of the ap April evaluations. And uh, what we were hearing is that uh, producers weren't, were concerned that the calving trait evaluations they, they were seeing weren't matching um, what they were observing on the farms. And that uh, generated some groundswell and uh, created some pressure on the industry. Lots of discussions and reviewing of the, the methods took place and uh, has led to some um, changes going to be implemented here with the August proofs. So, um, so uh, yeah, the calving traits have been a big part of uh, Holstein selection for quite some time. Uh, Jeff, when you and I began our careers, we probably felt like the calving, calving ease was one of the weaknesses of the Holstein breed. Uh, it certainly seems like we've made some good progress since then. Oh, without question, and, and it was a concern, and, and uh, for obvious reasons, if you look at a chart, uh, Joel, if you can show our first one here, and look at the difficult bursts in the Holstein heifers uh, chart clearing back, dating back to 1980, uh, you can see there was a, a, a drastic change in the incidence of difficult bursts in first calf heifers over the last 30 years, and it's in a, a very good direction because we've seen a drastic decline in the amount of instance that, that has been taking place. Unfortunately, the way the, the information has been shown, it, it hasn't uh, uh, shown you this decline, but uh, when you look at the population, uh, without question, we're heading in the right direction. So the, the new base for calving ease, Chuck, um, will hopefully do a better job of depicting what's truly going on as shown here, but can you explain what that looks like? Sure. Um, so we have uh, different ways we express uh, evaluations for different traits, and uh, some of those have different uh, genetic bases. So I'm going to start out with a little background information here. Um, with the calving trait evaluations, uh, the industry, CDCB, makes an effort to express those calving trait evaluations uh, in actual percentages or levels of birth difficulty or stillbirths that uh, you observe on the farm. It's a combination of both the genetic level of the, the calves and the, the heifers giving birth, uh, as well as the management uh, trends and levels uh, that, uh, in, the, in the current, uh, current farms. For most traits, the genetic base determines the zero point for the PTA levels, and the evaluations are expressed uh, plus or minus from zero. With the calving trait evaluations, what we do is we try to use the observed population average as the genetic base, and then the bull evaluations are expressed as deviations from that population average. Um, since the early 2000s, uh, the breed average we've been using, or the base we've been using for the calving traits, has been uh, roughly 8% uh, for both, and, and the evaluations deviated up and down from that 8% level. And that was never adjusted based on the, the trends we were seeing in the actual population. So as we went through the April base update, the, the calving traits were updated to account for the improvement in genetic trend, um, but the scale wasn't adjusted for the, uh, the environment or the phenotypic changes we were seeing at the farm level. Now starting in August, uh, we will update the base for the decreasing uh, or the improving management levels on the farms, and uh, that will, and then in future base changes, we'll make updates in both the genetic level and the phenotypic level. Um, and this way, the calving traits, the calving trait evaluations that we see published on the bulls, 
uh, will be much closer to the levels that uh, folks actually see uh, on the farm. One other change being implemented here with the August evaluations is we're making a subtle change in the base for the stillbirth evaluations. They had uh, slightly different, different definitions in the past, uh, but going forward, both traits will have the same genetic base. The base for the calving traits will be the observed percent difficult births in first calf heifers, and the base for the stillbirth traits will be the observed percent stillborn calves in first calf heifers. So these base definition changes are going to have a pretty dramatic impact on the level of sire evaluations. Jeff, you want to talk through that? Well, the nice thing about the, the changes that are taking place, it's not going to change necessarily the rank of the bulls. The high bulls will still be high, the low bulls will still be low, but the variation from high to low is drastically going to, going to be changing. And Chuck talked, uh, uh, he talked a lot in terms of calving traits and just to uh, define what we mean by that. We are talking about sire calving ease, daughter calving ease, sire stillbirth, and daughter stillbirth. And if you look at this chart, uh, Joel will move to uh, to show the current base uh, for sire calving ease. Chuck talked about it being around 8% and it has been for quite a period of time where the new base for sire calving is going to be closer to two, two to two and a half. Um, so it is a drastically different uh, when you're looking at the actual figures themselves, but again, uh, never underestimate rank is what's most important. Daughter calving ease also be re reduced from about eight and a half, somewhere to around two and a half. Sire stillbirth uh, and daughter stillbirth will also be reduced to a certain degree, not to the degree uh, of the calving ease evaluations. Uh, we haven't made as much genetic improvement in those traits, but we're de definitely making uh, changes in the right direction for those as well. So if you look at the distribution on the next chart here, Joel, of what high to low looks like, we're very accustomed to, to bulls today being somewhere between 4 and 13% calving ease from, from high to low. But um, with the August evaluations, it's going to look quite different. Uh, it's going to be closer to somewhere between 1 and 4 is from high to low on our distribution uh, of calving ease. So uh, while that gets the most notoriety of all the calving traits, um, there'll, be, there'll be slight variations in each of these traits, but when you're looking at calving ease specifically, uh, we're look, looking at a whole lot less variation, and we're looking at bulls, if you go to the next slide, Joel, that really will make the difference um, uh, when you, uh, you you take into consideration bulls like Jedi and Riveting and Rome that are listed here that have had uh, calving careers high to low through their calving their their livelihood but today bulls that are a little higher like they are uh, with the new calving evaluations are going to be substantially less than that um, these are estimates I should say because we don't know what the actual August data looks like yet but uh, they, they will still be on the higher end of that bell-shaped curve, but the actual number itself is going to take some adjustment to get used to. So, um, these evaluations are, are are more depictive of what's truly going on on farm, as you've mentioned, Chuck, and that's what's most important. So, when you look at the, the these base definitions, it's going to affect other national indexes that are calving ease are a part of. Can you explain how that will take place? Yes. So, uh, both. Uh, the net merit dollar formula and the TPI index uh, include the calving traits uh, uh, in the index, and so they will both be impacted by these changes for sure. Uh, for net merit dollars, uh, the thought process is is to to keep the economic uh, values for calving dif birth difficulties and stillborn calves the same, um, so they're not going to change the f the formula. So the smaller calving trait values will. Uh, and that the fact that they have reduced variation um, will mean that uh, the calving traits will actually have smaller influence in the overall net merit ranking of bulls or how the calving traits get used in the net merit dollar formula. Uh, for TPI, uh, the Holstein Association is using this as an opportunity to adjust how they work with the calving traits. Um, they are going to switch some of their emphasis uh, away from birth difficulty from calving ease uh, into the stillbirth weighting. So previously both uh, each trait got 1% of the weighting in the TPI index and now going forward the cal daughter calving ease will get a half of a percent of weighting uh, and the st daughter stillbirth will get one and a half percent weighting. 
They're going to adjust the standard deviations of those traits and the constant used in the TPI formula to hold uh, the overall values uh, on average uh, steady. So uh, for net merit, it's going to have smaller influence, uh, kind of as you would expect because uh, it's less of an issue than it used to be. Uh, for TPI, there's going to be a switch to uh, a little more emphasis on stillbirth rates and a little less emphasis on, on dystocia. So um, the bottom line, though, is uh, how do these impact? How do these changes impact the decisions that get made at the farmer level? So, what should producers do with all this uh, new information? Well, producers are best uh, uh, utilizing any trait, whatever that may be, by utilizing a proper index that fits the herd's objectives and goals. And we could debate all day long what that index needs to look like, but uh, calving traits are really no different than other traits it should be properly weighted within an index uh, and then that will best utilize the genes that are affecting those traits in the most economical way so uh, continue to use TPI continue to use net merit continue to use whatever index that may be but change the weight within that index on the calving traits to a reduced level as Chuck you just mentioned here uh, it's the most uh, proper way to economically place these values uh, into your herd so Overall, it, it's uh, the days of saying, well, a bull needs to be a certain amount to be a calving ease bull. That's probably not the, the proper method. We need to get better at associating in an overall index instead of an independent calling rate like it's been in the past. So, Chuck, about, uh, we've talked a lot about a lot of different things. Excuse me, we talk about a lot of different things as far as how to properly use the index, but can you give us a couple bullet points to wrap this thing up to, to shape what this all truly means? Yeah, absolutely. Even though we went through lots of base changes in April, we're going to have a little more of a base adjustment here in August with the calving traits. Uh, the evaluations for the, the calving traits in August will be much lower than uh, what you've seen previously. And uh, you're going to need to adjust your selection standards for calving traits and uh, really uh, emphasize that uh, trust your index in the use of those uh, calving traits uh, in your overall selection index. So with that, uh, uh, that wraps up the information we plan to present. Uh, we appreciate your participation and uh, your attention uh, to this material. And uh, we look forward uh, to seeing the proofs uh, when they're released here in a couple weeks in August. And I certainly appreciate Joel picking this time slot to give this uh, scenario because it's a whole lot more pleasant to listen to this report than it is the news. So thanks, Joel, for doing that. <laughs>